Senator from Florida. Are we in a quorum call? We are. I ask that the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. Mr. President, since coming to the United States Senate just over three years ago, I have regularly spoken about the dangers presented by Communist China. Last month, outside the Kennedy Caucus Room, I was joined by a group of pro-democracy activists from Hong Kong and advocates speaking out against the genocide in the Uyghur homeland. And this month, as the Olympic Games have gone on in Beijing, we've seen the dangers that our athletes have faced. Athletes who have tested positive for COVID have been taken away by Chinese authorities, where they, where they have been properly fed. The FBI urged Team USA to leave their personal phones at home for fear of being surveilled by the Chinese government and impacted by Chinese hackers. Of course, we saw the dangers athletes face in Communist China several months ago in the case of tennis star Peng Shuai. Peng is one of the most recognizable Chinese athletes. She's a three-time Olympian and was ranked the number one doubles player in 2014 by the World Women's Tennis Association. She has won championships at Wimbledon and the French Open and has represented her country at the highest levels of tennis competition. So in November, when she shared her story of sexual abuse by a former vice premier of the Chinese Communist Party on social media, it rightfully caught the world's attention. Communist China's reaction to these disturbing allegations have shocked us all and completely verified all our fears. Instead of taking Peng Tsui's claims seriously and investigating these allegations, the Communist Chinese government followed its authoritarian playbook, silence, deflect, and cover up. General Secretary Xi and his communist thugs are so thin-skinned, weak, and intolerant of any question of their conduct that the government immediately silenced and disappeared Peng. People around the world ask on social media, where is Peng? Chinese state media released what it said was an email from Peng to the Women's Tennis Association contradicting her previous allegations. It read like a hostage note and only raised more concerns as to her whereabouts and safety. Then Beijing shared a couple of videos of Peng at very structured public events and staged several video calls with the International Olympic Committee. The IOC didn't ask about her disappearance. They didn't ask about her allegations of abuse. And in the months since, the IOC has worked hand in hand with Communist China to cover up Peng's allegations. In the days after the Olympics opening ceremony, the IOC worked with Chinese officials to publish a highly controlled interview of Peng in a French sports magazine. Her answers that were translated by a Chinese official, Peng announced her retirement from pro pro uh, professional tennis and denied she had previously claimed she was assaulted. It was disturbing, and the fact that the IOC helped coordinate the interview shows Thomas Bach is willing to prioritize his relationship with Communist China over the safety of athletes. Compare their response to the World Tennis Association. At the beginning of December, the WTA announced it would be suspending all its tournaments in Communist China it was clear that Peng Tsui was safe and in good health until there was a completely transparent investigation into her allegations of assault. It's a stark contrast between two organizations that are meant to protect athletes, one aiding in the censorship and oppression of athletes while the other does the right thing. And now you have a well-known pundit representing the Chinese Communist Party spouting gross and demeaning comments about Peng. On 60 Minutes Australia, Victor Gao, the Vice President for the Center for Chinese, China and, Glo and Globalization, a former translator for, for Deng Xiaoping, argued, Peng could not have been assaulted because she is a strong, because she is strong and athletic, so she should be able to defend herself. Can you imagine even saying that? The Chinese Communist Party is saying that there's no way Peng could have been assaulted, so you better stop talking about this issue. Well, Mr. President, I'm not going to stop, about talk, stop talking about this issue and not to go to let comments like that slide by. That's why I've introduced a bipartisan resol resolution with my colleague from Virginia rebuking the IOC for its failure to clearly and forcefully challenge the party's claims against Peng Shui safety. The same resolution was unanimously adopted by the House of Representatives in December, and it's crucial that the Senate do the same. My colleague, Virginia Senator Warner, is joining me to lead this resolution, along with 14 of our colleagues from both sides of the aisle. I'm glad that my colleague from New Jersey, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, has committed to mark up and favorably report this important resolution in the, co in the committee next month. I look forward to seeing this passage there and swiftly bringing it to the floor. The United States is the leading voice of freedom and democracy around the world. We cannot tolerate this kind of behavior, and today my colleagues and I are standing together for human rights. Mr. Chairman, I yield the floor.